In this tutorial, we will learn about automatically counting and measuring 3D objects using isosurface renderings. We will also learn about setting the correct measurement ranges and options to target the objects of interest in ImagePro Premier 3D. Using this image in minimum intensity projection, we can see that our objects that we're interested in are in the center of our volume. Because they are dark, we are going to want to create an isosurface that will threshold on this darker intensity. To create an isosurface, as we learned in previous videos, we'll want to move to the panel on the right hand side. Choosing our Add an Isosurface button, we will get the dialog to see how to subsample, filter, and threshold our isosurface rendering. In this example, we will turn off auto and reset to full resolution. We'll leave the 3x3x3 low pass filter, and because we have dark objects, instead of using auto bright, we'll use auto dark. We'll leave close edges off, meaning anything touching the edge of the volume will not close, but leave the object open, and we'll leave executing the count to a manual step later on. Because we chose Auto Dark, our selection will be at the darker range of our histogram. We also have a color palette set to white with no transparency. In order to get the best visualization, we will turn off our channels, and instead of using minimum intensity projection, we'll use the blended composition. We will also leave the white colored isosurface for now because we will be using count classifications. Because we only want to count the objects, on the interior of our volume and not objects that are touching the surfaces, we will want to go to the 3D measure tab and our three dimensional options. In three dimensional options, labels, outlines, and segmentation options are all listed here. First of all, we have the options to change our text on each of our objects to name, measurement, or none. We can change the font for max contrast, the size, and the number of digits to follow the decimal. When drawing manual measurements, we have line widths, arrow sizes, and sphere sizes for all of the measurement overlays. When pressing the count button, all of our objects will automatically color themselves in a random selection. If you ever want to have all of your objects colored with the same isosurface coloring, choose this option. We're going to also put clean borders on so that all of our objects that are touching the border will be removed from our count. We'll close our 3D options and we're going to count all of our objects. Now we can see that two things have happened. One, all of our objects have been counted and colored. And two, all of the objects that were touching the borders have been removed. When all of our objects are counted, a data table will appear automatically. We've placed our data table on the left hand side because we knew we were going to have a lot of objects. At any time, this data table can be pulled off of its docked position, moved to a second monitor, or to the right hand side. In this example, we will be looking for objects of a certain size. And in order to do this, we need to have the right measurement types. So on our 3D Measure tab, we'll go to Types and look at all the measurements you have available in our list. All of those on the left-hand side are those that are available for use. All the ones on the right-hand side are the selected measurements. They can also be used as a filter, which we will show now. When measurements already have a filter set up, the minimum and maximum values will show in this data table. And if they're checked, they will be actively being used as a filter. To edit these ranges, we can click and type the value that we desire to have, or we can close this dialog and choose the Edit Range dialog. The Edit Range dialog is a popular dialog that gives a graphical interface and histogram-like look and feel to each of our measurements. And all the data that you see in your histogram is data that are actual objects in your image. The minimum and maximum can be freely moved to remove and deselect all the values below the minimum or above the maximum. This allows you to see the number of objects in range. In total, we counted 116 objects, but we're only selecting 40 of them and the remaining have been deselected. 
In this dialog, you can choose the minimum and maximum, and do so for each of the measurements that you selected previously in the types. In this example, in area of surface, we will leave our min and max at full range, and instead choose our volume to do more precise filtering. We'll choose a minimum and remove everything that is below 130,000 square microns. Before clicking OK, we'll ensure that we have Apply on Close checked. This means that it automatically applies to the image as we see it, and I won't have to recount. You can see here that dynamically it removed all of the objects that were out of range. And now I can see all of the objects that are still in range. My data table is updated as well. Two important things to point out are the results grouping, where your last count results show the total and the in range of the image that you're viewing. At any time you can turn the ranges off as well. And when doing so, you see that your total is still 179, but now my in range has been increased to the 125 objects that I was filtering out. The reason for the discrepancy is the clean borders that I also have on. That is not considered a filter range and won't be affected when I turn my ranges off. Now that I have counted objects, I want to manipulate my data a bit so I can see things more clearly. One, each of my data table columns can be sorted top to bottom or bottom to top. Here I have my volume and I can see my largest objects, click on them, and automatically see them in the image. Here, my largest object is easy to see. If I switch over to the select view, which I can do by clicking this button, or toggling using the V button. I'm able to select the objects in either the data table or my image view. Now I want to use a different data view. From the view group, I'll choose data histogram. This will show me a data histogram where I can select the types of measurements that I'm interested in, such as volume, choose the number of bins, such as four, and group all of my objects by a classification range and using class colors into each of these four bins. I'll simply click the button and will automatically classify into four different classes. The colors that you see here are also represented in my image and on my data table. Now that I have classes set up and I had previously selected a class grouping, you see one through four for each one of the objects. Image Pro Premier 3D builds upon the tools of ImagePro Premiere. In ImagePro Premiere, the capability of grouping all of my classed objects has been around for a number of versions. Here you can see each one of my classes with each of its corresponding colors, and when they're collapsed, I see all of the statistics for each of these groupings. If I want to change the type of statistics that are viewed, I go to my grouping button and look at the different options I have for totaling. I can show nothing at all, the count, the sum, average, min, max, and standard deviation. Whenever I'm finished measuring my data, I can send it to Excel, a text file, the clipboard, or generate a custom report. Once the default report has been selected, I can simply click the button for creating this report, a screenshot is made, and all the data is placed automatically into my report. For advanced users, going to the Measure tab, and collecting this data into the data collector allows you to collect data from multiple images to generate a full experiment's worth of statistics. To evaluate this powerful new analysis product, register to receive a 14-day free trial version to run on any 64-bit Windows 7 or 8 PC, at least meeting our minimum hardware requirements. For more information about ImagePro Premier 3D, or any media cybernetics product, please contact your local reseller or company representative.